Mr. Schluter, we know that you are going to put the animals' welfare at the heart of European elections of 2014. How can you motivate this gesture? Well, animals cannot protect themselves. They are defenseless unless we help them. So it's important that we have parliamentarians who realize that in a modern society, protection of animals defines how much humans we are. Mr. Schlager, what does it mean in concrete measures? So how can you implement it, this beautiful idea? Well, in Europe, we have a lot of laws for which the European Parliament has co-decision. That means it cannot pass unless we agree. And on the animal welfare, the biggest suffering today for which the European Union has the power to change is our farmed animals and how we transport our farmed animals and also in trade agreements that we consider animal welfare aspects and also in medical and other research where currently there is a lot of animal testing. On all those areas we can improve if we have engaged politicians who want to change the situation. Mr. Schluter, we understand the situation is absolutely deplorable because there are very few states who really follow the European Commission instructions and the rest they just simply ignore it. Repeatedly, the Parliament has talked with the Commission to try to explain that they cannot just say it's the Member States' problem. If Member States do not comply with European regulations, in some cases even their own national ones, the Commission has a responsibility to make sure that all Member States follow the rules we have agreed upon. You cannot make concurrence by violating animal welfare standards as it is today. You, you get a competitive advantage by treating animals poorly. That's unacceptable. Mr. Schluter, do you mean that the states should be taken to the court? The Commission has the option to take member states to court and to fine them for not following the commonly agreed laws we have. And it's all too common that member states today get away with poor animal welfare standards or not checking current laws properly. For example, animal transport directive. Member states have obligations to check and verify that the actors comply with the law, but many member states don't check. Mr. Schlosser, we know that the citizens enjoy low price for meat and at the same time half of it goes to the bin, goes to garbage every single day. So does it really make sense to have a, such a low price for meat products and let the animals suffer the travel from Poland to Italy to have it cheap for the citizens if they really don't value it? Consumers have been used in Europe that we constantly spend less money on food and we are also eating more and more meat. I think we have to reevaluate how we see upon eating meat. When I was a kid and you got the portion, you got a small piece of meat. Today it's a huge one, but of much worse quality and for much more suffering. I always say, well, buy organic meat or eat meat not so often and eat a little bit more vegetables. Then you can buy high quality product with better animal welfare conditions and you get a full meal anyway. You don't need to spend more money on food to improve, help improving animal welfare standards. Just spend it more wisely. Mr. Schluter, we know that there is a comprehensive report of the European Parliament on cancer caused by abuse of meat consumption, especially in countries like Germany and Spain, where people eat up to 120 kilos of meat per year. So would it be a relevant measure to introduce a tax on meat like in Japan? Well, I mean, eating meat has positive and negative consequences for the being. But uh, the problem is when you eat too much of anything, your body is not in balance. And the fact that you need meat every single meal, every single day, it doesn't make sense at all. And a meat tax is not a European competence. If you want to tax meat, you do it nationally. And in my home country, we want to tax all the environmental consequences of eating meat. So the price you pay is also the consequence 
on environment and on animal welfare. So you see the consequences of your actions and the price. Mr. Schlitter, the last, very last question. How do you put the animal welfare at the heart of European elections uh, if until now the Commission was neglecting the issue for so long? Well, when you ask people what they want, they always say, we want to protect animals. The question is, it's not a high status issue in the parliament and it's not a high status issue in the election campaign. So you need people who are engaged in animal welfare to be elected because they will not forget animals during the five years they are here and not just make an empty election pr promise. So in, elect people who are engaged. They will keep that engagement all through the five years they are elected. Then we can get a change. Thank you very much, Mr. Schlutter. Thank you.